Hi, and a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Just a short video today, one that I promised to do a little while ago is to show you how to make modeling chocolate. And I've got white chocolate here, and I'm gonna show you how simple it is to make it into really wonderful modeling chocolate. So you can do all those fiddly little decorations on cake, and it tastes delicious. Let me show you how. And for those of you that are really interested in modeling chocolate, there's a few tips that I found out about modeling chocolate today that I didn't even know about it. And I'll talk about those at the end of the video. Now, modeling chocolate is very simple to make. We start with our melting chocolate and make sure it's melting chocolate, not chocolate chips. That has a product in that stops it from melting. Uh, we've got 250 grams of white chocolate. That's about nine ounces. And then you're gonna need some glucose or corn syrup. I've got four tablespoons of this in this little bowl here and I've added one tablespoon of water which I've just melted in the microwave or made it nice and viscous like that. So let's get and melt this chocolate now. Now I've just done two blasts of 30 seconds and it looks as if that hasn't started to melt but if you start to stir it through you'll see that the chocolate buttons are actually melting nicely and I won't do many more blasts in the microwave because I don't want to uh, to overcook the chocolate. So there's just a few little solids left in there and I'll just do that for another 10 seconds and I'm sure that's gonna be all soft and creamy. Now you can see my chocolate there is beautifully melted. It's nice and smooth. Now this is the trickiest part really of modeling chocolate. You do have to be careful here. We've warmed up our glucose or corn syrup. It's not hot, but it's just nice and runny like that. And I just want to pour it in over the chocolate. Now, you would be tempted maybe to over stir. And really, that's where a lot of people go wrong. You've got to take your spoon and very gently, very gently, just turn the corn syrup or glucose into the chocolate, trying not to over stir. Otherwise, the chocolate will start to separate. And the chemical reaction should start to see the chocolate bind together. You can still see little rivers of corn syrup running through there. As you see the chocolate start pulling away from the side of the glass like that, stop stirring. And I've just laid out some plastic wrap or food wrap here on the table and I'm just going to ease this out of the bowl onto the plastic wrap. Then I'm just going to cover it over and I'm just gonna flatten it out Really, this is just to help it cool down. And at this stage, I'm gonna take the modeling chocolate and put it in the fridge for at least three hours until it's firmed, and then I'll show you the next stage. Now, here it is, it's cooled down now, it's pretty tough, and I'm just going to unwrap it. And we now need to uh, just work this modeling chocolate a little bit. We need to sort of knead it and um, get it into a nice, smooth paste. So as you start to work the modeling chocolate, it'll soften up and come together a little bit like a plasticine or a Play-Doh. So you can see how quickly that's become nice and malleable. But before you start using this, you need to chill it down again. It get a little bit greasy from the warmth of your hands and a little bit too soft to use. So I will roll this up and pop it back in the fridge, cool it down, and it's ready to use. Now, if you decide you want to color the modeling chocolate, now is the time to add your coloring. And I would suggest that you use either a powder coloring or a paste coloring. So you don't wanna to add too much more liquid into this, otherwise it'll get very sticky. Now I only discovered this today and I was quite fascinated as to why my normal chocolate, modeling chocolate here is a lot lighter than this one here. Now I've never used the Cadbury's before. Normally I use the Nestle baking chocolate and today I use this Cadbury's and you can see it's quite a bit more yellow. Now this one says with real chocolate. I did a bit of research. This one does not have cocoa butter. It's made with a vegetable shortening and this one has a higher content of cocoa butter. And I think that is why it split easier when I was mixing it. Now, which one works best for modeling chocolate? Well, there are two things to weigh up, really. This one here, <laughs> sorry, you can't barely see it, but this lighter one that I made with the Nestle, 
it was less sticky. This one separated, the, uh, the high cocoa butter content separated, but it still came together and it makes a great modeling chocolate. But for my choice, I'd go for the Nestle. So have a look on the back of the melting chocolate and see whether you've got high cocoa butter content or not. I would say go for the vegetable shortening. And uh, taste-wise, they taste very similar. This uh, uh, cocoa butter one, a little bit better. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed that. Take care. Share the love, give the thumbs up down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Be good. And I'm going to leave links here for my fondant icing and also royal icing for those of you that are into cake decorating. It's been a lot of fun making this video. I hope it's informative. Be good, take care, see you next time.